Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday morning trading room. My name is Eric Semft. I'm going to be your host here this morning. For those of you new in our room, welcome. Uh, what you're looking at here is the diversified trading system. And I'll give you just a real quick overview. Uh, it's diversified because we're looking at the market from three different points of view. Here in the top left, we have the Hawk Scalper. Top right, we have the Falcon Swing Trader. Bottom left, we have the Eagle Trend Trader. And the bottom right, we have the latest addition to the DTS family. This is the Raptor. The Raptor actually incorporates elements of the Hawk, the Scalper, and the uh, Eagle Trend Trader all into one trading tool. All these signals develop the same way regardless of the tool and I'm just looking at this first micro macro cross here on the Hawk. This is one of our higher probability signals. Oh, what time is it? Oh dear, it's only a minute into the session. Alright, maybe we'll try it. All the signals develop the same way. You get a warning dot along with an audio alert telling you that the signal is getting ready. Then when the signal is complete you get a triangle and a hash mark, and that tells you it's decision time. Now, you're going to notice that, you know, sometimes there's a lot of arrows here, a lot of signals. We don't necessarily take every single signal. Rather, we focus on what we hope to be a high probability signal, such as this first micro-macro cross signal in the Hawk. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to run this one out a little bit if it in fact ends up going our direction. Uh, the first micro macro cross signal occurs when the micro line, that's this thin one, crosses the macro line, that's this thick one. And everything comes into sync. So we have a red signal, red trend lines, red filter. This tends to be a very high probability signal. This tool that you see me using here on the right hand side this is called the uh, Trade Manager, and the Trade Manager, it has two components. It has this risk component. Actually, let's do the risk component down here first. Um, this allows me to control my risk for every single trade. So what it does is no matter where I place my stop, I'm only risking 2% of my capital. So what that means, if this trade just makes a beeline for my stop loss, which it appears to be doing at the moment, um, I won't incur more than a 2% loss. The risk is contained to 2% of my trading capital, which, as you'll see as the morning goes on, is so very important. Uh, secondly, it has all these different stop strategies built in. There's actually 16 different stop strategies that we can choose from. All of them are fully customizable. I guess I should get a stop in play here. Why don't we start maybe with the swing high low? Sure, that's going to put us up there. Okay, so I've just enabled my stop. I'm going to hold my stop there just for a little bit. And right now I'm using the swing strategy. As this trade progresses, hopefully it'll go in our direction a little ways here. I'll show you how the stop strategies actually uh, manage your trade, how the trade manager will automatically take your stop and roll it according to the stop strategy. Let me just show you what that's going to look like. <clears throat> Let's say we go with the ATR strategy, which is going to look like this. See these blue dots? That's how if we had sold or here, let's say we had bought this first micro macro cross signal right here and placed our stop down here, this is how the ATR strategy would have managed our trade and we would have eventually been stopped out right here. Now you can see currently we're still against the ATR strategy so I'm not going to employ it just yet. We're going to stay with the swing strategy for the moment. As we look to see who might be in control of the market this morning. So there's the Hawk Scalper. We got a uh, first micro macro cross. Taking a little bit of heat on the trade, but not too bad. Here's also a uh, trend change, or pardon me, a late filter entry signal. Uh, 
brewing on the Falcon. This is also one of our high probability signals. This, with the Falcon, what we're doing is we're paying particular attention to the trend line. When the trend line's green, we're looking for buy signals. When the trend line's red, we're looking for sell signals. And here, too, we're looking mostly for signals that come into confluence. In other words, red bar, red trend line, red signal, red filter. The late filter entry signal occurs when the filter goes out of sync, comes back into sync. The trend line never changes color. That tends to be a high probability signal. I'm going to set up. Can I take it there? Yes, I can. I'm going to anticipate that we're going to get a hash mark. There we go. And I'm going to try to run this one out as well. Normally, I would just take profit on target, but I'm going to try to show you how these stop strategies work. So hopefully we'll be able to do that. Oh, before I leave the Falcon, um, you're going to notice some of these add-ons. Uh, with the Falcon here, we have the support and resistance suite. These are support and resistance lines which are forecast for today's trading session. No, they are not pivot points or pivot levels. And no, they are not Fibonacci retracements. If they happen to coincide with one, that's purely a coincidence. Um, what we've got, as I said, 21 lines. These three lines that you see right here kind of set the tone for the day. The gold line is uh, the median line. It's right in the middle of the mix. The blue line above is primary resistance. The blue line below is primary support. Once the market gets beyond these lines, if it gets above here, it's going to tend to be a bullish day. If it gets below here, it's going to tend to be a bearish day. If it breaks this median line, which I'm hoping it will do, uh, we should see the market fall off. Uh, and actually, I could set a profit objective down here at the primary uh, support line. Let's say we're going to bail out at 44.37. That sounds pretty good. The support and resistance suite is a system add-on, which means you can place it on any chart. You can use it on a five-minute chart. You can use it on a tick chart. You can use it on whatever you want. It's not just specific to the DTS system. Uh, this is the Eagle Trend Trader, and you can see yesterday was just an exceptional trending day. Unbelievable day in the NASDAQ yesterday. I'm fully expecting today to be a lot choppier. Uh, here, too, we're looking for confluence in the signal, usually confluence in the signal. There is a, a red bar buy signal, which is when the red bars actually produce a buy signal. That tends to have a high probability follow through. This one not, hasn't engaged yet. With the eagle, we have this trading band. That gives us our directional bias. So when the soft edge of the band is above the hard edge, we look to buy. And when the soft edge is below the hard edge, we look to sell. This tool here, this is another one of the system add-ons that you can use in any chart. This is called the Trade Forecaster. And what the trade forecaster does, it tells you what the current market environment is and what the next one is most likely to be. So we've got currently trend mode for about another seven minutes, after which time we're going to enter swing mode. So things likely to get a little bit choppier here as the morning progresses. Uh, not liking this, not liking that the, that the buyers came back early here. What I'm going to look for now is for the sellers to make one more press lower, and then I'm going to get a little bit more aggressive with my stops again. Because if they fail on the next push down, we're going to see the market rally. It's so very early. We're only 10 minutes into the session. I don't normally take a trade 
um, the first minute or so, unless it's on the Eagle. But last time we were in the demo room, it took a while before we got anything tradable. So I'm trying to show you some stuff here this morning. All right. So there the market's pressing. Watch what's going to happen now that this stop strategy has been changed. See that? As the bar finishes, the trade manager automatically takes the stop and rolls it down. Now hopefully the market will break through these lows. See there's some buying going on here. And we should see, see how the trade manager automatically rolls our stops. We hit the break even trigger, so it took the trade to break even now. And if we get a little bit of luck here, we should see the market uh, fall off some more. Good morning, Jim. Uh, Jim's providing some advanced decline numbers here this morning. He says we got 1,800 on the buy and 800 on the sell. Uh, don't forget that's a little bit lopsided because we do have a little bit of an opening gap, but that's where we're starting the day. Okay, so I think I'd better do something with my Falcon stops as well. See how the trade is moving lower here. So I'm going to enable my stop strategy. There we go. So what I'll do with this is I'll also change it to a three period. And currently we're at break even on both trades, but you know, we've already hit our high probability profit target, so don't be shy about taking profit. There's a fair amount of money sitting there. And we should probably anticipate some sort of reaction. But again, high probability signal, no problem hitting our high probability target. I'm trying to be a little bit cute here. I'm trying to run it out a little bit further. But we have hit our high probability targets both in the Hawk and the Falcon already. So a couple of good opportunities. How are we doing here? See, the we've got $200 already on the, the Hawk, which is great, and an extra 100 on the Falcon. So you may want to grab that before the market makes a bigger reaction. Here's the uh, Raptor. Now, as I mentioned, the Raptor is kind of a combination of the other tools a hybrid, if you will. And uh, with the Raptor, we've got elements of the Eagle. You can see we've got the band here, but with the Raptor, we have a double band. Um, the bar colors, yes, they can be changed. <laughs> they don't have to be blue and, and fuchsia if you don't want them. Um, but there's elements of the Hawk Scalper, the Falcon Swing Trader, and the Eagle Trend Trader all programmed into this one system and we're just about to get tapped at break even again the stinkers yeah they're just about to tap us at break even scoundrels oh well that tends to happen after we hit our high probability target by the way is you can normally anticipate some sort of reaction. I didn't want to ride out uh, the swing, which is why I had the stops at break even. All right, back to the Raptor. Um, uh, again, with the Raptor, just like with the other tools, the signal generation um, develops. We get a warning dot with an audio alert, a triangle and a hash mark when the signal is complete. But here, too, we're looking for high probability signals. Namely, we're looking for things like hard edge bounces. So this would have been a high probability signal. We're looking for soft edge cells. So this would have been a, a good sell signal. Took a little bit of heat here, but fell off. Working a possible cloud crossover signal now. We'll see whether the cloud crossover... As the name suggests, the clouds cross over. The market drifts into the cloud, comes out, and provides a little bit of resistance to that cloud. Let's see if we produce a signal. With the Raptor, uh, I've got the Trailblazer, which is the alternative to the Trade Manager. It's uh, the Trade Manager without the risk component built in. And the reason that is is we had some owners who were trading some very fast-moving markets, and they said, you know, by, oh, okay, so there's our signal. 
I'm going to show you now how the trade manager does everything with a single click. They said, can you give me a single click entry system? And we said, sure. But we had to eliminate the risk component of it. Now you can also enter signals this way and place it right there. Or you can simply hit the sell market button. You preset your contracts and your profit targets up here. And we can also preset a stop. Let's go with the swing high low. And what's going to happen is if this signal engages, you're automatically going to see our profit targets, our break even trigger, and our stop loss. And it's all just a one click entry system. But like I said, you need to know more or less what your position size should be so that you don't overextend yourself. Very, very important. All right, so Jim says the... Uh, okay, so there you see we've got the orders, we've got our profit targets. I'm going to take profit on one at 44.50 half. We've got our stops in play. And now we'll just see how that cloud crossover signal plays out. Jim says the, uh, the DAX and the Russell and the advanced decline all fading, but the bank index is vertical. So a few conflicting signals as far as secondary indicators go. Oh, by the way, folks, I'm following the NASDAQ on this particular monitor. I'm also watching crude oil and gold. But please, don't be shy with your questions. And uh, don't be shy about asking if there's a market you'd like me to see. If it's in my mix, I will certainly show it to you. So you see here the trade manager rolled the stop a little bit according to the swing strategy. I'm going to get it to hold just a little bit longer. In fact, I may just roll it a couple ticks back, put it above this morning's high. As we're back down near the low of the morning. So if we can take out this low, pretty sure we'll see at least... Hmm, well, what should I guess? <laughs> 44.50 pretty much gets us into the... Uh, into the gap this morning that we saw. Um, I don't think I mentioned the Geiger counter yet. This is also one of the system add-ons. The Geiger counter is essentially a tape reader. It shows you the time and sales and uh, you've got the history here in this little tape the histogram you've got the needle which will print green when the market's getting a little bit more bullish red when it's more bearish and white when it's dead neutral and then you have this dial I find this dial very helpful when the dial pulls over and holds for like three or four or five seconds that shows a lot of active buying or selling and we would anticipate that the market would follow through from there if it does not follow through then we can assume that all that extra buying or selling has been absorbed and the market should move the other way so it's a great tool to watch so we just saw a spike in the buying you can see here on the tape see there's more buying they're trying really really hard now the sellers are starting to chew through the orders. Ooh, buyer is holding their own. So this bar that we've got forming here is a pretty influential bar. I may go back to, there we go. We'll let the trade manager manage my stops above this high. If the buyers are going to dig in that hard, they're going to swing the market and there we go. All right, so it was a failed signal, but... Again, uh, we're taking steps to control our risk, which is very important.
almost more important than anything else you can do as a trader. Uh, speaking of the Raptor, Jim says, hey, there's a buy signal on the crude oil Raptor, and sure enough, you are correct. There's a nice little hard edge bounce and a buy signal. So we get the warning dot, the triangle, and the hash mark. So there's a buy opportunity on the crude oil Raptor. Uh, this Geiger counter um, is a an add-on. It will work on any chart, not just a DTS chart. So we saw all this buying go through. That was why I brought my stop in a little bit tighter because we knew the market would rally from there, quite frankly. So a nice little pop-up. Now we're getting a possible cloud crossover to the upside so we'll keep an eye on the Geiger counter and the Raptor and see how those signals develop. All right so there's the bird's eye view if you will. Um, Mo, uh, Mo's asking about Ninja 8. Um, there was some concern that Ninja 8 conflicted with the indicator warehouse uh, system and uh, Mo Adam said it's best if you contact him directly um, I don't know why he would say that but he did so if you just want to shoot Adam an email if anybody has concerns about this it's Adam at indicatorwarehouse.com but I know that in the past whenever Ninja has made some sort of upgrade, um, the system has always been <laughs> fixed, for lack of a better word. Uh, I know that the guys got an, uh, a beta release of Ninja 8 and they were playing with it, <clears throat> excuse me, trying to uh, catch any problems early, but there were no problems that I heard of. I'm always uh, the last to upgrade. I'm not the guy who's always after the latest new shiny thing. <laughs> I'm always the guy who's using the same old, same old. Okay, first micro macro cross higher. I suspected we were going to see a little bit of a chop day today because of uh, yesterday's extreme rally. That tends to happen where you, after a very strong rally day, you get a market that ends up going kind of sideways. This is the first micro macro cross, again, our high probability signal. And again, I'm going to try to run this out a little bit. I'll delete the profit objective. What's giving me a little bit of pause is we had the market pay off to the short side. And sometimes what I'll do is if the market is paying off in one direction, I'll favor trades in that direction which is one reason I'm running my stop so crazy deep. Okay, let's see if they can get up there and hit the break even trigger. Because after yesterday's rally during the morning all the sellers were able to do was push the market sideways and a lot of that pushing and pulling will be going on today as well hmm Jim says the advanced decline still sitting at around 1800 on the buy and 900 on the sell. That's that's pretty much where they started the day, so that hasn't changed a whole lot. Oh, nicely done. 
Jim bagged uh, 10 ticks on crude oil. Good for you. It's nothing like picking up 100 bucks. Well, they're going to think about going higher here for a few minutes. Uh, traders often ask, how do you trade a choppy market? And the DTS system is very good at picking up chop. Uh, here with the Hawk, I can tell you the market's getting choppy because of all these yellow bars. Yellow bars on the Hawk scalper, and the scalper, of course, is designed to pick up short-term moves. <clears throat> so if you're getting yellow bars on your short term, you know that the market is starting to get um, kind of sideways, kind of choppy. The best way to chop, uh, trade a choppy market is to avoid it, really. Okay, we've hit our break-even trigger. I'm going to enable my stops now. And here, too, yeah, we've hit our high probability target. I guess I should have just taken profit when I had it. I'd be up almost 300 just on the scalper. Oh, well. We'll try to let this one run out. We'll see if they're not interested in going lower, maybe they're going to try going higher. But the best thing to do, most often in a choppy market, the market's going to look very sideways, right? So the best thing to do is to let the market get out of that range, retest, and then look for that signal on the retest. Same thing to the downside. Let it get out, let it retest, and then look for that opportunity to sell. That's the best way to trade a choppy market. Sometimes the biggest challenge is recognizing that you are in chop, and that's where the DTS system is very useful. It, with all these yellow bars cropping up, we're thinking, okay, maybe the market's going to enter some choppiness. You see, here comes the retest now. Oh, well, we'll just let the, uh, <clears throat> we'll let the trade manager run this one out. But what I do is I trade the probability of the trade, of the signal. So the first micro-macro cross signal, which is this guy right here, I know is a high probability signal. The other one that we saw this morning was this one right here. Yes, we took a little bit of heat on the trade, and nothing too serious, and the signal worked out just fine. Uh, here's another first micro-macro cross signal. If you happen to be trading in the overnight or the, if you're in the European time zone, pretty quiet, though, for the most part. Just looking for some sort of commitment now from the buyers and or sellers. I should just be scalping in and out. Shouldn't be trying to run out of trade today. So here on the Raptor, we got a soft edge buy signal right down here. The soft edge buy signal must always be preceded by a test of the extreme, uh, either the high or low. In this case, it's a retest of the low. So the market retested the low, it failed, produces a buy signal. That's what we call a soft edge buy, even though it occurred right here on the hard edge. Did that give us a trend line break also? Yes, I guess it did. The soft edge buy signal tends to have some pretty good follow through to it. Even though it's counter trend, it's one of our higher probability signals on the Raptor. So there's a soft edge buy there. Here's a soft edge sell right here. Why is this not a soft edge sell? Well, I suppose you could consider that a soft edge sell if you consider this your, your retest of the high. Otherwise, this would be your retest, and there's your signal right there. And here, too, you took a little bit of heat, but overall it had some decent follow-through to it. Uh, 
they going to back up and tag me here again to break even, stinkers? But it is looking as though the market may be a little bit more bullish today, maybe. Just maybe, we'll see. All right. Well, we'll stay with the with the hawk trade here for a little bit, just so you can see how the trade manager, um, you know, is adjusting the stops as the trade progresses. If we get a little bit of traction here, and the bulls actually make a good push higher, say they're going to try to get to forty five hundred. Do we have a support and resistance line? Where's our next stop? Forty four eighty one. Oh, that would be a decent move up here to the primary resistance area. After that, 4504 would be our next objective. But currently, well, I guess we are getting away from the median line a little bit. I was going to say currently we're just kind of skewered by the median line. We've bounced off of it a few times. Now we're contending with the with the high at the overnight high at 44.73 if I were trying to ride out this swing I would have my stop still down here or at the crest in the macro line or at the very least back here to the macro line um, because there is a very real possibility because of this breakout here that the market will try to retrace back to the macro line before recovering and trying to move higher. So a pullback to say the 4460-ish area is a possibility. And oh, look at that. That's also where the hard edge is on the eagle. Whenever the market encounters the hard edge, we anticipate a reaction. So here the market came down, hit the hard edge, gave us a red bar buy signal. This is one of our high probability signals here on the Eagle. I must have been looking at a, something else when this printed because this is a high probability signal. The market comes into the hard edge. We anticipate a reaction. We get a red bar with a green buy signal, and there's the follow-through. Now, if I took it on the hash mark... Yeah, we have hit our high probability target. In actual fact, what I would do is I would probably use the next bar because that's the one that's going to turn over the ATR. That's that squiggly red and blue line that you see. But we hit our high probability target there as well. And Trade Forecaster says, well, scalp mode is hot on the heels. We've got scalp mode coming up in about eight minutes' time, which, like I said, after yesterday's very strong rally, should not be that much of a surprise. Might be getting a four-arrow consolidation. We haven't printed any arrows yet, but the four arrow consolidation pattern, it has this bull flag flavor to it. And we would look for the market to come out of here on the fourth signal and resume the trend. So technically, we haven't printed any signal yet, but we have one, two, three. We're working <laughs> signal number four. None of them have printed. Normally they print and we count the arrows. But a buy above here would be very realistic. If they get out of there. Come on. Wow, 
Wow, the advanced decline actually getting a little stronger, Jim says. Uh, 1928 on the buy and 838 on the sell. If this holds, if this little swing holds, um, we should be in for a slightly more bullish day, slight, sl just ever so slightly. Okay, well, here's a four arrow consolidation that finally printed its first arrow. But we'll see. Um, we've had four signals print here. We'll see if that ends up carrying the same kind of weight to it with it. Yeah, we're doing not bad there. Got a, about 115, 120 in open profit. Oh, there we go. So that lit a fire under somebody. <laughs> Yeah, like Mo, Mo says, boom shakalaka. <laughs> That's just about what it was, too. Uh, Jim says, the cloud to cloud on the YM is now up to 72 ticks. I know, the, the market is just crazy strong the last couple of days. It's almost like don't even try to short into it. Uh, let's see, did we get any other opportunities? Uh, we got a very early trend change signal here on the Falcon down here. Now, with the early trend change signal, it's kind of like the um, soft edge cell that we see on the Raptor. It must be preceded by a retest and a failure. The early trend change signal occurs when the signal prints as the trend line changes color. But you can't simply take that signal because of that. Because you're going to see sometimes the trend line changes color. Oh, can I find you an example? Yeah, right here. Okay. So the trend line changes color as signal prints. We wouldn't necessarily go crazy about selling this signal. Well, primarily because we're... If you look at the context of this chart, we're in a crazy strong uptrend. You don't want to be shorting into that. But what we're looking for is we're looking for the structure. Boy, I've got to go back a long ways. We don't simply trade the change in the trend line color. We need that structure. We need the for everything to come into sync. And you can see we produced a buy signal right here. Solid buy signal. That's our trend change signal in the Falcon, and of course the market never looked back. Here's another late filter entry signal. So again, the trend line does not change color. Filter goes out of sync, but comes back into sync. Very, very high probability signal. signal a signal you can take with a great deal of confidence. So there was an early trend change signal. This is the proper trend change signal. It is printing away from the trend line, though. You see how we have this little bit of a gap? Remember, when it trades away from the trend line like this, you need to run your stop maybe just a little bit deeper because there could be a tendency for the market to try to come back into the trend line, recover, and then go higher. But it's still a trend change signal. It's still worth taking. 
Uh, not a whole lot of structure right here. I would try to risk it as deep as I could, as deep as my trade manager would allow. And next stop, 4481-ish. Well, a quiet morning, but still we had a couple good opportunities for profit even in the first um, half hour of trading. It had a couple good scalp signals and a good swing signal. Normally I go all in, all out, but I'm trying to run these out a little bit today for you. When in doubt, uh, I do believe that going all in, all out is the better strategy, especially if you're a smaller account trader. If you're a larger account trader, you normally have the luxury of running more than a single contract, in which case um, you can take profit on part of your position, leave part of your position in, in case the, the market really lights up and just explodes. But if you're just the small guy, um, you know, banking these profits will go a long way to building your account. Uh, so let's see, we had uh, two trades. Yeah, two trades on the Hawk and one trade on the Falcon. So we would even conservatively we would be up about 250 already. Which is not that bad. Not for just going in and you know trading singles and just grabbing your high probability targets when you have them. So the market's struggling a little bit now to get to the 4480 area where the primary resistance is at. We're getting a little bit of rejection here every time we hit this 4475 zone which will no doubt have a little price sensitivity for traders. All right, come on, you guys. Yeah, still not much going on otherwise. Uh, like I said, if anybody has any questions or um, if you'd like for me to take a look at another market for you, I'm sure there's probably a, at least one or two e-mini traders in the room um, or Forex markets. Um, I do get the odd stock market in the mix also. Other than that, <laughs> we're just waiting for the market to uh, do its thing. And so far we find ourselves in a 
Really good move. Again, the first micro macro cross. We're just playing the probabilities. I'll show you since we're waiting on stuff, uh, what the high probability signals look like. These are your high probability signals on the on the hawk. And uh, what we're looking for are things like the first micro macro cross, the macro pullback signal, the four arrow consolidation signal, the post consolidation signal. And uh, then we've got our red bar buys and green bar sells that tend to develop near the end of the trend. So you see there's a lot of signals that print around here that we don't necessarily take. We tend to focus on the higher probability signals, of which the first micro macro cross was one. And then we had the four signal consolidation right there. That was the other one. One, two, three. Oh, we only got three out of that one. But we had a post consolidation signal right here. So we got uh, got a few things going on. They're just kind of chugging along. Bayard's asking, where can we see that diagram? You can email me for it if you like. I'll give you guys my email. Uh, for DTS owners, it is at the um, members area. Or, again, you can email me. I should mention to you, with the DTS system, I know what you're looking at here. You're figuring, oh, well, it's a moving average system, and if I can you know, figure out what your moving average lines are, I can duplicate the system. Well, yes and no. Uh, there's actually about a half a dozen things going on behind the scenes here. There's a half a dozen algorithms that have to be qualified before the market even prints a warning dot. This is not just a moving average crossover system. If you've ever traded a moving average crossover system, you know how difficult trading a moving average crossover system is. Um, but like I said, there's at least a half a dozen parameters that have to be met. Some of them are price related. Price has to do actually certain things for the scalper to produce a signal. It also analyzes things like momentum and, and volume and other things. But like I said, what you're looking at here is kind of the stripped down version. The programmers uh, trying to make it uh, pretty, you know, programmers, they love eye candy, uh, but also simple to interpret. That's why a lot of the DTS systems rely on things being in sync. So bar colors the same, signal the same, trend line the same, filter the same. That's what we're looking for. And same thing with like the four arrow consolidation pattern or the macro pullback pattern. It's not just, you know, mimicking a couple moving average lines. And same thing with the, uh, well, with all the tools. These tools have all been specifically designed for their particular environment. You know, have you ever wondered why your trading tool works one day and it doesn't work the next? Why your signal works one day and doesn't work the next? Has your signal changed? No. What has changed? The underlying market conditions. So the programming for the Falcon Swing Trader is entirely different than the programming for the Hawk Scalper or the Eagle Trend Trader. The programming here that's going on behind the scenes has been developed to pick up swing trades. 
so here is our trend change signal I honestly thought the market was going to try to reach back a little bit more before it headed higher but no it went straight up hit our high probability target now it looks like we may be getting a little bit of a reaction and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit more aggressive with my stop on the hawk trade while I have the chance I'm going to go maybe to the parabolics there we go try to protect a little bit more of that open profit the parabolics a little bit more aggressive we also have the bar high low strategy which is an ultra aggressive stop strategy will take you out on the first sign of weakness <laughs> yeah Jim says it's crazy another 80 tick cloud to cloud on the YM that is a wild day I don't know if they're uh, if that upward momentum is starting to wane I think we will see more of a a rally as the day goes on but a uh, move back here maybe as low as 4460 kind of retest of these lows that seems entirely plausible Uh, with the speaking of the trading stuff while we're waiting here's the high probability signals for the Falcon and you can see even though like I said there's a bunch of arrows and stuff this is these are the signals that we're concentrating on namely we're looking for the trend change signal uh, which is a high probability signal we're looking for the late filter entry signal which is a high probability signal we're looking for the basic trend line touch signal which is your average signal but still above average probability so those are your high probability signals for the Falcon swing trader as we are just about to get tagged here on this nice little rally up from the first micro macro cross signal on the hawk it certainly is a slower day than yesterday All right, I'm going to put that up on the shelf. Here's gold now on the Eagle Trend Trader, and we're producing a green bar sell signal. Oop, there it is right there. I was going to say we just have the warning dot. Can I risk it to there? Yes, I can. So this is, uh, again, one of our higher probability signals for the Eagle. We're drifted into the hard edge where we anticipate a reaction and we've produced green bars which would normally be bullish but we've also printed a sell signal which is obviously bearish so this is kind of like the last stand for the sellers if they don't recover the market at this point well then it's probably going to end up moving a little bit higher what's interesting about this signal is that the market owes us a retest of the low before it heads higher so I suspect we're going to see at least one more press lower here on the part of the gold bears. And uh, if they do, I would start to adjust my stops a little bit more aggressively as we get down here to this 1221, 1220 area, just in case the market flinches. Uh, because gold does make larger moves, I tend to double the profit objective as well. So you can... Uh, take profit here around 12 21 half and it's very likely the market will hit that target providing of course it engages the signal so there's a possible eagle trade on the gold market okay we did get stopped here on the hawk so the trade manager took me out of the trade and 
you know, that's the beauty of the trade manager is uh, you don't have to watch the trade every single tick. The trade manager will do that for you. You set your stops, select your stop strategy, and that frees you up to look for other opportunities. All right, crude oil also a little bit sluggish. Oh, actually, we've got crude inventory today, don't we? Why don't we pull that over, and we can play with the crude inventory report. That will allow me to show you the OCO function. Now, what we do sometimes on crude inventory is um, we'll bracket the market. If it looks like the market has established a trading range, which today it seems to be between the primary resistance and the primary support, these blue lines, and if the market ends up trading somewhere near the middle prior to the report release, well, that enables us to bracket this position as an OCO. OCO standing for one cancels other. So that's what this OCO function does. And what it will do is it will automatically uh, set my stops for me. So I'm going to run a little bit of a wider stop here. I'm going to run a, uh, an ATR with a multiplier of 4 just to try to keep the stops a little bit further back. And in a couple minutes' time, we should see the crude inventory release. And why don't we throw the Geiger counter on here, too, just so we can watch the price action unfold. Now, when you're using the OCO order, it's important to remember that these orders are live the moment you put them on your chart. Come on, get down to, toward that median line. You got another minute to get down to the median line before the inventory is released. Um, it's kind of interesting. We've got a buy signal here. See the trend change signal? So the trend line goes from red to green. We've got our characteristic little up, down, up pattern, and then the market comes in with a buy signal. A lot of times, the DTS tools will actually pick the market direction before the report is released. So we'll see if that holds true again today. It's been that way the last couple of um, couple of weeks where the DTS system actually gave us an early clue as to which way the market was going. So the trading right now, relatively light for crude. We should see some bigger numbers start to fly through here shortly on the Geiger counter. Oh, we're getting some serious buying. Look at that. See how the dial is pulled over and it's holding, it's holding, it's holding, it's holding, it's holding. So either the buyers are loading up or the sellers are going to absorb all that buying and knock them down. Okay, the volume getting a little bit heavier on the bid and ask, and we should see this market light up any second now. The other strategy for trading crude oil, a friend of mine likes to let the report hit the floor and um, then bracket whatever range is established. So within about 30 seconds or so after the report is released, he'll bracket whatever range the market has made. Okay, so, so far they took a bounce off the primary support. And they're bouncing off the primary resistance. Oi, what a wild session. And look at how the volume has changed here on the Geiger counter. 
just the, the volume going through just dwarfing the previous volume. Can't hardly even see it. It's total flat line. Okay, worked, we worked a trend change signal right here. Would have been a little bit difficult to get a hold of, though, uh, seeing how the market was moving kind of quick. So, so far, the support and resistance suite doing a pretty good job of containing the market with our support and resistance levels. And is there going to be some follow through now? So a little blip to the upside. Look at all that volume. Almost perfectly matched between the buyers and the sellers. If anything, I don't know if the sellers may be slightly heavier. Uh, not significantly so. So a lot of volume flying through early, and now that's kind of back to the average. And we'll see the Geiger counter adjust itself accordingly. Well, a fairly neutral inventory release. I was hoping to show you the OCO function. Well, what I'll do, if we don't get filled one way or the other here uh, shortly, I'll start to bring my orders in just so you can see how this works. That, in fact, one side does cancel. Well, why don't I do that? So we'll bring our order in below this little low. I would, if you're looking to tr do this trade for real, uh, you're better off leaving your low there. Okay, so you see we filled the order to the short side when it broke down. Uh, we automatically got a stop, a trailing stop, even though it was against our stop strategy. Now we'll bring it up there to the stop strategy, and the trade manager will manage the trade from here on out. We've got a break-even trigger in play. Once the trade goes live, you can adjust all these things, right? Say you want to pull your break-even trigger a little bit lower. You don't want to go to break-even until 49.05, let's say. Let's see if we can catch a little bit of a move here. We might, might get lucky. Come on. But that's how the OCO function works anyways. It's great for when you want to bracket a market. If you see a market moving sideways and you just want to bracket the range, trade the breakout higher or lower, the OCO function allows you to do that. The Falcon, though, look at the trend line is like a roller coaster, just back and forth. And the uh, filter is breaking up like a tartan. Looks like a checkerboard down there. All right, well... We'll throw that on the shelf for now. Get back to the action here on the NASDAQ. <laughs> pretty quiet. Pretty quiet right now in the NQ. Um, actually getting another hawk signal. Here's a red bar buy signal. The red bar buy signal tends to develop near the end of a trend. You can tr take it with the trend. Look for a little bit of a scalp. Look for a retest of the high. You can also trade the failure of it, in which case we would be looking to short below. Or you can simply use it as an early warning that the trend might be breaking down and uh, that we may be producing a sell signal shortly. 
getting a soft edge cell here on the Raptor. I'm just going to punch in and I'll get my stop above the high. So with the soft edge cell, again, counter trend, we're anticipating uh, reversal to the hard edge and the soft edge cell a little bit more subtle. We've got that teeny tiny little retest right there. I got to keep the stop above the high because it is a counter trend move. Uh, if the market reverses, it's going to reverse to retest the highs. Uh, might as well show you the uh, failure here of the red bar buy signal. It's essentially the same type of signal that we're looking at on the Raptor. And we're working a possible trend change signal now on the Falcon. See how the trend line's changing from green to red. And we're going to get a um, perhaps a warning dot and a triangle hash mark if this continues lower. So why don't we watch the Raptor for a little while. A lot of buying on this bar, a lot of buying and selling. Uh, you probably notice that the width of the bars have, are changing here. I should point out that's another add-on. You can use that again on any system. This is the dynamic equivolume bars from Indicator Warehouse. And the dynamic equivolume bars uh, show you graphically the volume associated with that particular bar. So bars with more volume are, are wider. Bars with less volume are narrower. Now, what a lot of people don't realize is that when the market is trending, volume is actually pretty light. There's not a lot of resistance to the price heading higher or lower. Uh, however, when the market starts to encounter resistance, either higher or lower, that's when uh, the traders get a little bit more active. So when these bars get wide, we know there's a lot of activity, a lot of sensitivity around this particular price. So we can tell from these bars back here, as well as this bar right here, that this whole 4470, 4471, 72 area is fairly sensitive. Now, the buyers ended up winning this bar. But then the sellers came back and pushed the market a little bit lower. So even though the bar finished bullish, um, there was an, an awful lot of selling going on on that bar. <laughs> And here we ha have the buyers again trying to dig in because this is where they took control last time, around this 44.69 area. So if we see the market break 44.69, uh, we're going to see all these buyers that bought here, as well as the buyers that are buying here, we're going to see them pack up and leave. And that should send the market down at least to the hard edge here, around 44.64.65. Our gold trade doing not too badly. Here's the gold trade on the Eagle. So we're just shy of our high probability target. Uh, again, I've doubled the profit objective a little bit. Looks like we took a a tick slippage on the entry there, but hey, at least the trade's moving in the right direction. So I don't mind giving up a tick. This positive slippage is always nice, but that doesn't happen all that often. Okay, so the buyer's trying to come back here a little bit. 
this is always the problem with a counter trend trade of course is it kind of blocks you from taking a with trend signal should we get one and sellers just kind of thrashing about a little bit here with the crude oil trade uh, one second and this is crude oil on the Falcon uh, we got a, a a trend chain signal right here so after that early thrashing about we came about with a trend chain signal we're already short from our little breakout scenario, but still a, a good trade here on crude oil as they're down here challenging now the primary support level. It's funny, I was looking at the daily chart the other day and I thought crude oil was poised to head a little lower. I didn't believe it because, of course, crude trading where it's at everybody thinks it can only go higher well I think a bottom is in in crude oil at least for the long term maybe not the short term but certainly the long term okay so gold slipping lower the NQ coming back now with a little bit of a retest of the high. Looking for the sellers to get more active here once again. And um, if we can see a couple bars move in our favor, I'll start to get a little bit more aggressive with our stops. Gold just hit our high probability target. So if you were opting for that target, you would be flat ah great question Dan Dan asks uh, he says I've been paper trading for a couple of months but I work full-time can't really pay attention to the markets during the day what is a good market to trade after hours gold gold is truly a 24-hour market um, here's gold on the Falcon and uh, what time zone are you in Dan just so I have a good idea of what to show you okay Dan Central so um, five six okay so let's take a look at the Asian session oops sorry going to make you guys dizzy here so here is gold yesterday and this is going to be about five o'clock Dan's time right here so this is when the Asian markets opened uh, one thing about the Asian markets and gold is you'll get decent moves you see you got a decent progression out of this signal but the trades don't seem to unwind all that quickly. You see, like a bar prints every couple minutes or so. That's good. It's actually um, a good training ground because it gives you time to look at the charts. It gives you time to analyze. Uh, you don't have to, um, you know, hurry into a trade. So that would be the after hours there on the falcon on gold let me bring the the hawk scalper over because i think we may get a couple more opportunities on the hawk scalper so let's wind back this is all in the overnight 
um, the London session. I think that's going to be a little bit late for you, being central time. But uh, again, nice little macro pullback signal here toward the end of your work day. Uh, this would be around dinner time that that signal printed. But again, decent follow through. Here's a nice little macro pullback signal. Could have scalped out for another profit there. Um, if you're inclined to leave a trade run through the overnight, you could have shorted on this red bar failure or this first micro macro cross lower and woke up to some uh, tidy profits. Um, the other thing you can do is you can look at some of the currencies, uh, especially those that are native to the time zone you're watching. So in this case, you'd be interested in the yen or perhaps the mini yen. But gold will suit just about anybody's time frame. All right, so here comes the Raptor now, and this is now our retest of the highs. I can start to get a little bit more aggressive with my stops. I'm going to give it a couple more bars here just to make sure we can take out that low Come on, somebody get in there and short that Getting another yellow bar, another soft edge sell signal. If you wanted to take a look at the the larger retest, so looking for this bar now to break down. This is a very important bar. Sellers take control of this bar. see them print 4470 like I said we're going to see buyers start to exit their positions come on just a little lower you can do it Come on here. Sometimes it helps if you pull it down or if you tap the top of the monitor. 
Sometimes it'll shake the price down. There we go. See? Told you it worked. Just don't hit it too hard. <laughs> All right, so again, all this uh, buying around the 4470 mark, again, you can tell the width of the bars. That's one thing I really like about the mean Renko bars from Indicator Warehouse. Also an add-on, you can add this to your trading system. It uh, doesn't necessarily have to be with DTS. But you can clearly see where the buying and the selling is taking place. All right, so the sellers control that bar. Here we go. All right, if we take out the low, uh, 44.69 half. So we need to see 44.69, quarter 44.69. I think we're going to see the uh, the buyers run for the hills. Oh, look at that. They're really trying to defend that 4470 area. 4469 half, 4469 three quarters, 4470. We're getting a lot of market participation there. Okay, I'm going to go to a different stop strategy now. Again, just to protect myself a little bit, we're going to go with this. There we go. Last chance for the sellers to regain control of this market. If they fail here, then we are almost certain to see a rally. Although we've got very, very tight little congestion, very, very tight little sideways trading range. Come on, come on down. Here, we'll give you a little pull with the mouse. All right, here, we'll hit the top of the monitor. I think we've got a hawk trade in play also based on the failure of the failure of the red bar buy signal. Remember how I told you we get a you can also use it as an early warning that a first micro macro cross may be developing. Well we just got that first micro macro cross signal in the same neighborhood. I'm actually going to hold my stop here where this one is. Uh, no, you know what? I'll do the same thing as what I'm doing with the with the Raptor. Okay. So we'll bring the stop in just a little bit, hold it above those swing highs, that most recent swing high, and we'll see now whether or not we can't get the sellers to get their act together. A very important bar that we're seeing right here. If we can get the sellers to step in. We've got a ton of open profit on that crude oil trade. We slipped two zones. This is very characteristic. When you get a signal like this and it breaks a median line or primary resistance or primary support, you can anticipate the market's going to move two zones. So our profit objective would have been down here at 48.61, where you can see that it actually took a little bit of a bounce. Looks like we're getting a little bit of a bearish reaction now to the 
uh, primary support line. So this may head lower still. I think it's probably time to adjust our stops here a little bit. Try to lock in some of that open profit. And we'll put that crude oil trade back on the shelf. Ay, ay, ay. Well, I think they're just going to thrash about a little bit longer. Uh, we're probably going to shut down the room here. Um, there's not a whole lot going on at the moment. Gold is recovering a little bit after giving us a, a tap on our high probability profit target. Uh, crude oil definitely slipping lower. And uh, the NASDAQ still within this very tight little trading range that we're seeing. Uh, but I think we're going to button up the room for now. Thank you very much for your attendance today. I hope that it was at least a little bit informative for you. We will have another open house next Wednesday, uh, right after the holiday weekend, Memorial Day holiday weekend. Woo -hoo! Um, DTS owners, I will see you in the trading room again tomorrow morning. And um, yeah, thanks for your attendance. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.